how are democracies now uh, going to uh, cope with this street protests which are coming out? Because uh, with the Israel-Hamas conflict, you're seeing in Europe, the, the governments have a certain view, whereas the street has a different view. I actually don't see this as a street issue. Uh, if you look globally and this explosion of, of kind of anti-Israeli sentiment that, that's spread up, I don't think it's spontaneous and I don't think it's organic. I think it's the result of global networks that have really been building out the infrastructure to, 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 uh, to pull the trigger on this. And this is definitely a modern phenomenon. So what we're seeing really, I think, is inattention to the issues of anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism. Uh, that's, that's been manifested with cash and networks globally for decades. And on October 7th, somebody just pulled a trigger, and that's really what, what, what got us where we are. So this question is, I think, much more significant than just the street versus what governments want. What we have here, I think, is a very, very extensive infrastructure of, of non-governmental actors and surrogates who build in global networks, so everything now is a global competition. Do you agree with that, the pressure of the street on uh, democracies? Well, it is a very complex issue, and I think that uh, Dr. Carafano is right that there's a, a, a lot of, of action is, is backed by uh, money forces and, uh, and, and also the mm -hmm. effects of these uh, international networks that are able to materialize somewhat spontaneously. But certainly there is a, also a larger issue about the relationship between uh, popular viewpoints and the decisions of governments. Because on a lot of particular issues, whether or not they have manifested, the, manifested in protests, um, we find that there is a disjunction between uh, opinion polls and, and popular judgments um, and the decisions that have been made by governments. For example, in Europe at least, there's been uh, a lot of surveys that show that most European publics feel that the sanctions policies that have been implemented since the beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine have been detrimental to their own economic condition. Mm. This is this is only only a couple of countries, I think uh, Norway, Denmark, Finland, UK, think otherwise. But you would find almost no reflection of this in popular, uh, mm. sorry, in the at the at the governmental level or at the level of political discourse. And I think if we if we step back and look at the last few years of, of major political decisions, oftentimes it 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 it, it feels to people that governments make a, a a bad decision, and then the issue set just moves on to another topic. Mm -hmm. um, so at least in Europe, which is where I live from America originally, but but living in Europe now, it mm -hmm. seems that there is a, a an increasing disjunction between um, the issues that are 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 bothering and, and motivating a lot of European publics and the sort of political discourse that is taking place at the elite level. This is a, this is a, this is a little bit separate from the issue of uh, large popular protests on specific issues. They're related some, somehow, but, but there, are, um, there are, I think, problems or, or issues that are coming up in the, the functioning of contemporary democracy. Can I just follow up yeah, on that? Because sure. I think it's a really important yeah. point. So there, so there are two phenomena going on simultaneously. One is the one that I discussed, which is really the weaponization of the street, which is political actors putting people out on the street to push for certain outcomes. Um, what, what Gladden is saying, I think, is, is a phenomenon which, interestingly, he lives in Hungary now, you live in India, you guys aren't experiencing this, and that is the dissatisfaction of people with their governments. And it's, it's particularly a problem in the U.S. and Europe. We are a 50-50 country, so we are deadlocked at the federal level. So there is this great frustration that government is not delivering. Click here to watch the full episode.